Hi, Terry Van Noy. Welcome to Math Class with Terry V. Hope this video helps you out, and if you enjoy it, please share it, comment, or like it. And you can also go to my website, mathpowerline.com. It's a math resource blog, uh, lesson videos for students, and other resources for parents and teachers. Give me a call, or go to my website or email. All right, let's go to today's lesson. Now, when you work with fractions, as uh, you know already, there's a lot of steps, and it gets a little confusing. Well, I want to break down just one specific type of working with fractions. That's subtracting mixed numbers where you have to borrow. Okay, It's a very narrow topic. But I have a little shortcut I want to show you. So we're going to start in this video with borrowing shortcuts, uh, when you need to borrow, and how you can do it really quickly to move on to finish the problem. Then I'm going to give you a problem set in the next video and then we'll finish with the self quiz. Alright, let's talk about borrowing for mixed numbers. So here's the old definition of borrowing. Just look at this subtraction problem 23 take away 7. Now what I have to do is look at the 7 and know I'm trying to take 7 away from 3. And the reason why I have to borrow is because 7 is bigger than 3, right? So I'm going to borrow from the 2 in the tens column to um, go from 2 tens to 1 ten and I add the other 10 that I borrowed right there. And that's the way you were taught to borrow when you subtract, okay? So 3 becomes 13 and 20 becomes 10. The two ones there represent 20. What we did is we just borrowed, we split it up. So now you do 13 take away 7 is 6. And don't forget to subtract 1 minus 0, which is 1. All right, so this whole idea here of borrowing from the left side and moving it to the right is what we're going to do with fractions and mixed numbers. So here's an example with mixed numbers. 1 fifth take away 3 fifths in this problem. Well, 3 fifths is bigger, so we have to borrow. So just like in the problem to the left here, I'm going to borrow from the 3, it becomes a 2. Now here's the question, a little bit of confusion for students sometimes. What do I do with the 1 that I borrowed? I took 1 away from the 3 to make it 2, so what happens to that 1 whole? Well, let's think about this. And I'll show you a shortcut in a minute. Well, we now have 2 holes plus the 1 that I borrowed plus the 1 fifth, right? All right, I still can't subtract the 1 and 3 fifths yet. So we need to kind of put this together like this. 2 holes plus, now I'm going to rename my 1 hole here as 5 fifths. All right, you can see why this takes a lot of writing and why we need a shortcut. But hang with me for just a second. Now we're going to just go one more step and let's combine these fifths together. And that's going to give me two holes and six fifths. All right. Bring my one and three fifths all the way over so we can line these up. And I know that six fifths looks kind of funny because we're used to having um, proper fractions, not improper fractions. But now we subtract. So six take away three is three. That is three fifths. And now it's 2 minus 1, not 3 minus 1. So final answer, 1 and 3 fifths. So the idea is that we make a top heavy or an improper fraction first. We create that from our borrowing so now we can subtract. All right, let me speed this up. I'll show you a shortcut. 5 and 2 fifths take away 2 and 4 fifths. Now the mistake a lot of students make is do 5 minus 2 first, but we can't. Okay, we've got to check the fraction parts first. And we notice we have to borrow because 4 fifths take away from 2 fifths. You can't do it. So let's just kind of keep things lined up. And we have to borrow from the upper mixed number. And I'm going to just scoot over the lower one here so that everything's lined up. All right. So how do we borrow? Well, we're going to borrow from the 5. It becomes a 4, right? Now the one that I borrowed is really 5 fifths, okay? Now notice how I have to kind of combine these fifths together. And so now overall I get a 4 whole number and 7 fifths, okay? We make what's called a top heavy fraction or improper fraction. So now we can subtract. So we temporarily unsimplify something in order to subtract. So when we subtract the fraction parts, we're going to get 3 fifths 
and two holes. So there's my answer. But there's a shorter method even from this. Here we go. Let's look at these four examples. I'll show you the shortcut. To borrow from the seven, it's going to become a six, right? Now that one I borrowed becomes five fifths, but we combine it with one fifth. But here's the idea. Change the seven to a six and add these two numbers together. All right? Because it's five fifths plus one fifth is six fifths. So we just keep the same denominator and add these two numbers together. So 10 becomes nine. Add the nine and the 10 together, that's 19, and keep the denominator of 10. All right, you have a top heavy fraction and you could subtract, you've borrowed. The six here becomes five, and the five plus the seven make 12, and keep the denominator of seven, five and seven, or 12 sevenths. And the last example, 12 becomes 11, because we borrow, right? And the one plus four make five, so it's 11 and five fourths. All right, that's the shortcut, but we really just did this without writing the step out. All right, I'm gonna give you two examples to go with over with me. All right, number one, seven and two fifths take away one and three fourths. Well, obviously I'm adding a step here of finding a common denominator. So we're gonna to have to multiply that five there by four and the same with the two on the top. Multiply top and bottom by four. On this fraction, we're gonna multiply both of those numbers by five, and that will give us our common denominator of 20. So, now I'm gonna do this vertically. You can do it horizontal if you want, but this is gonna be seven and eight twentieths minus one and 15 twentieths. All right, now, Notice that we're trying to subtract 15 twentieths from 8 twentieths. Can't do it, not enough. So let's rewrite this using our borrowing shortcut, okay? I'm gonna copy the one and 15 twentieths down and borrow from the seven, that makes six. Add the eight and the 20, that gives me 28 twentieths and now I can subtract. What's 28 take away 15? Yes, 13 twentieths and six holes take away one is five. All right, let's do this one. Ah, we have eight and five. We need a common denominator of 40, right? So multiply top and bottom of those by five and multiply top and bottom here by eight. All right, what's our new fractions? 11 and 15 fortieths minus 32 fortieths. I have to borrow because 32 take away from 15 can't do it, right? All right, borrowing the shortcut here, 11 becomes 10, 15 plus 40 is 55 fortieths, bring over the 32 40 so we can subtract. Just keep it all lined up. All right, what's 55 take away 32? Should be 23 40th. 10 take away zero is still 10. All right, next video I'm gonna give you some more of these to try. You have to find a common denominator, you'll have to borrow, rewrite your fractions, and subtract. All right, thanks for watching, good luck. All right, there you have it. I invite you to go to my website now, mathpowerline.com, or email me or give me a call. The way I work best with students is live online in my classroom. So if I can help you in any way, answer some specific questions, the first lesson with me is free as I show you how everything works. All right, study hard and take care.